So now we'll be talking about the idea of gravitational field strength, keeping in mind what we have already talked about. So previously we defined gravitational field strength as the force acting per unit mass on an object in a gravitational field. So if I just show you this information through a diagram, so if this is a very large mass capital M and if this is a smaller mass M which rests in the gravitational field of this object, then we would define the gravitational field strength due to this as the force exerted per unit mass. Now the idea is that we have previously talked about how to quantify this force in terms of Newton's law of gravitation. So we know that the force can be written as G capital M small m upon R squared, the distance between their centers, right? So if I talk about this, so like this, this would be the distance between their centers, right, R. So GMM upon R square is the force and divided by the mass which is in the field. So right now we are saying that this has a much larger field. So we'll say that the smaller mass M is in the field of this mass. So that's what we are talking about here. So the M's cancel out pretty obviously. And what you are left with is this expression for the gravitational field strength due to a point mass. And this is something that we'll be using a lot, right? So this is the expression. Let me just draw a box around this. So this is how we'll calculate the gravitational field strength due to any mass. So a couple of ideas here. First off, the gravitational field strength and, and any other field strength you'll also study in A2. All of field strengths are vector quantities, right? And in this case, the field lines is something that we'll also be referring to. So the idea is that this mass would be pulled towards the center of this larger mass. So it's a vector quantity directed towards the center. of that mass. Right? Another thing which we can also see here is that this also obeys an inverse square law. Right? So here as well, just like with the gravitational force, the gravitational field strength is also inversely proportional to the distance. Right? So the gravitational field strength falls off very quickly as the distance from that mass increases. And this can actually help to understand why we made the gravitational fields the way, uh, th how, why we made the gravitational field lines the way we drew them. So previously, we talked about the gravitational field lines, right? So we drew them in this way, what we call radial field lines, right? So there I told you two key things about uh, field lines which is that the field lines what basically they show is the direction of the force right so whenever drawing uh, gravitational field lines be sure to mark them inwards just to show that the masses would be attracted to this mass the other thing I mentioned was that the relative spacing of the field lines show the strength the closer the lines this means that the strength is greater and here we can see that as the distance increases for example if I go on to a circle like this the spacing is greater. This shows this equation in itself that as the distance from the source mass increases, the gravitational field strength weakens. It gets less in magnitude. So if I just show this concept through a table of values, so let's say we have the distance from that, uh, the distance from the center of a point mass and the gravitational field strength. So let's say at some distance capital R, the, gra the gravitational field strength is G. Then if the, di uh, then if the distance doubles by the inverse square law, this would become one fourth of its value. If the distance triples, it would become one ninth of its value. If it becomes four times, if the distance becomes four times of its value, if the distance increases by a factor of four, the gravitational field strength decreases by a factor of 16. And we've already go gone over the fact that the gravitational field strength can also be thought as the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the planet. So now if we quickly go ahead and make a graph for this, just to understand how the graph would look like for the relationship 
between the gravitational field strength and the distance from the center of uh, so from the center of that mass how would the graph look like so let's say this is a point mass on the y axis we have the gravitational field strength in newton per kg and on the x axis we have the radius not really the radius the distance away from the center right and let's just mark this x axis in terms of different multiples of the radius of this point mass uh, a bit self contradictory because point mass in itself means that uh, it does not have any dimension that's what a point means but anyway this will be uh, showing an important concept here so let's say this is the value of the radius right let's say that this is capital R here and then also capital R here and then you have more multiples so for example let's make this 2R and let's make this 3R and let's mark another one this would be 4R and let's just for the sake of consistency li uh, write minus R here just to show that now we're on the left of the center so this would be r uh, minus r and this would be minus 2r and similarly minus 3r and again here you have minus 4r right so now we have to draw a graph uh, that shows how the gravitational field strength changes for this point mass so the first thing you need to remember is that inside a point mass the gravitational field strength is zero right because if you're talking about a point mass this means that all of this mass is so basically when we're talking about a point mass it means that the mass is so small you cannot potentially go inside it so like you just have this uh, particle just like popping out of somewhere and you have nothing inside this particle right so that's the particle is all you have so you can imagine this as being hollow right so inside there's no mass so obviously if I just write this formula here for you guys so if this relationship is G equals capital G M upon R square if there's no mass then obviously there's also no gravitational field strength inside so then this uh, there's no gravitational field strength inside right and now when we're talking about the positive R axis we are basically talking about how uh, forces would be experienced on particles to the right here right so we know that if it's a particle is here then it would be pulled like this so that's how the gravitational field strength would look like so that would be plus g right so this is a vector quantity and this is something that we'll be uh, using to plot the rest of the graph as well so if at a distance of r if the gravitational field strength is some value g so that would be this point and then at 2r it becomes g by 4 right so that would be another point like this and then it drops very very fast so the values we discussed above so this portion of the graph would be something like this let me just give it another shot like this right and now if we go on to the remaining the left part of the graph so a particle here would be attracted towards the center again but this one I'm going to call minus g because if I called a vector pointing towards the left as positive g it would be minus g for this vector which is now pointing towards the right and if you reverse this if you draw uh, drew this here and if you were if you want to draw this one like this so that also makes perfect sense so this is uh, g and uh, so this is the gravitation field strength of g at r and then g by 4 at 2r and then again it falls up very fast so this is how the graph would look like so zero inside and then it follows the inverse squared law outside so this was the graph for a point mass and how about if we talk about a practical object like the earth so how would the gravitational field strength of earth look like so usually we do take the earth to be a point mass when we're considering it with respect to uh, very large distances between the earth and a sun between the earth and the sun or the earth and a star or the earth and a satellite so if you're talking about the gravitational field strength outside of the earth then it can be written pretty simply as g 
m and this is the mass of the earth upon r square right so as the distance from the earth would increase the gravitational field strength would fall off so outside this is pretty basic and you would have the same uh, one upon r square shape of the curve but what happens inside the earth right and this is something that we need to talk about now so the idea is simply this, that when you're inside the earth, the mass of the earth is not constant. It depends on where you are standing inside the earth. Because where you are standing and basically the mass that you are enclosing, right? That is what would exert the gravitational field strength. So the idea is that the mass is not constant. It depends on where you are, right? So the mass basically depends on how far out you are from the center. So here the idea is that the mass is not constant, right? So what we can do to simplify the situation is to talk about the mass in terms of the density of the earth, right? So how about we talk about the mass in terms of the density and the volume? Because we know this, that the density of any object is given as the mass per unit volume and again another assumption here would be that if we take the mass of the earth uh, sorry the density of the earth to be constant so that would be rho times v so assuming that the density is constant even though it's not because the earth is made up of different materials and all of those have different thicknesses and different uh, materials as well so the density is usually not constant but uh, if we talk about this, if we say that the density is constant and if we again take another assumption that the earth is a sphere, then we can say that the volume is given by 4 by 3 pi r cube, right? So how far, r, how far out we are from the center. So that's basically uh, what we're talking about here. So what would be the enclosed mass at that point, right? So then the mass can be written as this expression here and if we plug this back into the original equation so g remains as g the mass is now given by this expression 4 rho pi upon 3 r cube and then you still have that r square in the denominator so the r's cancel out like this and basically you're left with something which looks like this expression here so that becomes 4 rho pi g upon 3 r so all of this in the bracket all of this is a constant right for a constant density we took to be a constant pi g and 3 are all constants so this is then only changing with r right so the gra uh, the gravitational field strength is what we were working for here so here the gravitational field strength is basically proportional to how far out you are from the center right so inside the gravitational field strength is proportional to r and outside it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance basically the separation from the center now we can put these pieces of information together as well to find out a graph so this is what the graph looks like so the gravitational field strength increases uniformly inside the radius right so of a planet, for example, the Earth, if you're talking about that, the gravitational field strength increases uniformly. And outside the Earth, it follows that same 1 upon r squared, the inverse square law trend. So now let's say that we make this graph specific to the Earth. So we would need the, radi the radius of the Earth to calculate the gravitational field strength at the surface. We already know that this is 9.81, but let's just have a feel of the formula. So this is g m upon r squared. So G is 6.67 into 10 to the negative 11 always. This is the universal gravitational constant. M is the mass of the Earth here, which is 6.0 into 10 to the 24. And the radius of the Earth to calculate the gravitational field strength at the surface. This is uh, 6.4 into 10 to the 6 squared. So using this, if you calculate the gravitational field strength, this turns out to be 9.77 newton per kg right so this is because uh, there's also slight variation in this because of the earth not being an exact sphere 
So anyway, we can take this value for now. It's good enough. So this is 9.77. Add this value of the ray of the radius, which is 6.4 into 10 to the 6 meters.